us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, and pray. Do not leave us, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Geschichte. Es geschah aber, als wir zum Gebet gingen, da begegnete uns eine Magd, die hatte einen Wahrsagegeist. Lang. Paulus war darüber so. sich gegen sie und die Stadtrichter ließen ihnen die Kleider herunterreißen und befahlen, sie mit Stöcken zu schlagen. Nachdem man sie hart geschlagen hatte, warf man sie ins Gefängnis und befahl dem Kerkermeister, sie gut zu bewachen. Als er diesen Befehl empfangen hatte, warf er sie in das innerste Gefängnis und legte ihre Füße in den Block. Um Mitternacht aber gebeteten Paulus und Silas und lobten Gott. Und es hörten sie, die Gefangenen. Plötzlich aber geschah ein großes Erdbeben, so dass die Grundmauern des Gefängnisses verwankten. Und sogleich öffneten sich alle Türen und von allen fielen die Fesseln ab. Als aber der Kerkermeister aus dem Schlaf auffuhr und sah die Türen des Gefängnisses offen stehen, zog er das Schwert und wollte sich selbst töten, denn er meinte, die Gefangenen wären entflohen. Paulus aber rief laut, tu dir nichts an, denn wir sind alle hier. Der aber forderte ein Licht und stürzte hinein und fiel zitternd Paulus und Silas zu Füßen. Und er führte sie heraus und sprach, ihr Herren, was muss ich tun, dass ich gerettet werde? Sie sprachen, glaube an den Herrn Jesus, so wirst du und dein Haus selig. Und sie sagten ihm das Wort des Herrn und allen, das in seinem Haus waren. Und er nahm sie zu sich in derselben Stunde der Nacht und wusch in ihnen die Striemen. Und er ließ sich und alle die Seinen sogleich taufen und führte sie in sein Haus und bereitete ihnen den Tisch und freute sich mit seinem ganzen Haus, dass er zum Glauben an Gott gekommen war. The word of the Lord. Let's read the psalm responsibly. I will begin. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. A 
fire goes up before him and burns up his enemies on every side. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. A reading from the book of the Revelation of John. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of those of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you've loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you have loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of the 
the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes when you read a story, or especially when you watch a film, it's the minor characters that leave an impression. My favorite film directors who also write most of their films, the Coen brothers, are masterful at this. Several of their films develop by introducing minor characters that only appear for a moment. They interact with the protagonist in a way that helps us develop a sense of the major character. But they also carry the story along, provide important insights into the world of the major character, help us to understand the context of the story. They play a really important role. The story isn't necessarily about them, but it would be incomplete without them. Some examples, the cowboy narrator, uh, narrator in The Big Lebowski, the cashier in No Country for Old Men, Chet in Barton Fink, Big Dan in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? These are just a few of the Coen brothers' minor characters in their films, and each of them are there for important reasons. In today's lesson from the book of Acts, it's clear that Paul and Silas are the main characters. They are the stars of the show. They deliver a young girl from oppressive exploitation. They get beaten and arrested and thrown in prison. They sing hymns and praise God even while imprisoned. They are freed by a miraculous earthquake, have mercy on the prison guard and lead him and his entire family to faith, baptizing them immediately. In just a few short verses, a scene is set that is full of action and intrigue, full of triumph and loss, glory and consequence, good guys and bad guys, major and minor characters. The minor characters abound in this reading. The young girl enslaved and exploited, the callous and cruel men who were taking advantage of her, and later seize and beat Paul and Silas. The authorities they are dragged in front of, the prison guard and his entire household. And also barely mentioned the other prisoners in the prison. And I wanna spend a few moments thinking about those other prisoners. Verse 25 and 26 tells us about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. Everyone's chains were unfastened. Not just the ones praying and singing, but everyone. I love it that it was only Paul and Silas who prayed and sang hymns and had faith. And yet it was all the prisoners who were freed from their shackles. Somehow, the faith of two was sufficient for the whole group. And later on in the story, as if to double down on that point, the belief of the one jailer, Paul said, was sufficient enough for his entire household to experience salvation. Can you relate to these prisoners? Sometimes you feel like you're in the dark, sometimes feeling shackled to certain ways of thinking and feeling and acting, feeling stuck in a situation that you can't control? Can you relate to being not able to free yourself, yet experiencing freedom? It's the truth behind any AA, NA story that's being able to be freed, but not being able to do it yourself. It's a story of the gospel. It's faith stories. 
It's the way of our generous God. In other words, I relate to sometimes relying on the faith of others, the songs of others, the prayers of others. In fact, I think it's one of the best reasons to come to church, to be carried by the songs and prayers of other folks. So many of us, at least in some point in our lives, have felt imprisoned by not thinking we have enough faith or the right kind of faith. But maybe, just maybe, faith isn't given in sufficient quantities to individuals alone. Maybe it's given in sufficient quantities to communities because the life of faith isn't an individual competition. It's a team sport. Maybe God has provided us all the faith sufficient for our freedom. We just have to share it with others and partake in it with others. Stories in the scriptures attest to this. Maybe we just have to be, take turns being the ones who lower through the roof to Jesus and sometimes be the ones who do the lowering. Sometimes we are like Peter with faith that can walk on water and sometimes we're like Peter, the one who sinks under the waves. Like those major and minor characters in today's story, we have to take turns singing songs and saying prayers. When others feel trapped and imprisoned by doubt, fear, guilt, or shame. We have to take turns being that prison guard, sometimes in desolation and despair, and other times hopeful and joyful and bringing his entire household to God. Perhaps this is what Jesus meant when he prayed that we would all be one. Not of one opinion, not boring uniformity of thought and belief, but one in the sense that we carry one another. When we get carried, we get carried and we carry. We believe for one another. We pray for one another. And in those times when prayers just can't pass through our lips, we get prayed for. And notice how Jesus, yes, that Jesus, prayed for you in today's gospel. Prayed for me in today's gospel. Prayed for us he prayed for his disciples and for those who came to know God through their work. That's you and me and everyone who came to faith these last couple thousand years. That's a long line of saints we belong to. A line of people who believe and disbelieve, who held to the faith and abandoned it. Folks who knew both strength and weakness, both doubt and faith. Folks like you and me. This week in your journey of faith, maybe you'll be a major character singing the praises of God, praying with great faith. On the other hand, maybe you'll be a minor character benefiting from the prayers and praises of others. Wherever you are, know that you help to carry the plot of the church forward, that you matter to the storyline. Know that Christ loves you and prays for you and calls you to love and pray in return. Finally, let me say this. Some stories don't end like the ones we read today. Some are tragic and unfathomably heartbreaking. The news out of Texas this week is one of those stories. 21 dead as a result of gun violence. Here in Europe, it seems so foreign, so strange, even so unenlightened, so evil to think of the mindset that allows for such tragedies to unfold on a daily basis. And you're right. I can't wrap my brain around it. I can't understand the viewpoint that thinks of limits on the freedom to bear arms as less responsible than unfettered access to deadly weapons. Can't understand those who see the murder of children at school, of worshipers at church, of shoppers at a grocery store, 
as just collateral damage in the service of a greater political good. I don't understand it. In fact, I'm at a loss how to even think charitably of such folks. If I'm real honest, I even find it hard to love the people in power who perpetuate such a wanton, cruel, and murderous system. I admit, I find it hard to pray for them. But if we're in this together, when I can't, someone else does. Someone in my community has the faith. Someone in the communion of saints can hold it all together in love. I believe that when my love runs dry, someone else has it. Christ's love never runs dry. I believe that unity is there even if I can't recognize it or accept it. It's there. Now to be sure, Christians must demand justice and accountability from the systems they, they participate in, whether political, economic, or otherwise. So I've reached out this week to my congressmen in my home state. I've donated in support of real change to this broken political system. I've prayed for the victims, their family, and for those I hold responsible even begrudgingly for the perpetrator of this evil and those who enabled him. In the end, like those prisoners, I feel a bit shackled by the situation, kind of trapped and powerless. But in honor of and out of love for those innocent children in Uvalde, Texas, I'm determined not to give in to despair and hate and bitterness. So slowly, almost under my breath, I'm starting to follow the example of Paul and Silas and hum out a little tune of praise. I hope you're singing too. We need all the voices we can get. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, who In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. 
for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. For the peace of the world, especially in Ukraine, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. For this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially Laura and Dennis and Roly, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. For all those who have died in the communion of your church, including the 19 children and two teachers in Uvalde, Texas, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. O Lord our God, accept the prayer of the people, the multitude of your mercies will look compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious and love your souls. To you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Just a couple of announcements as we continue our worship together. The first is, um, just, as a, just so you know, I'll be away from the 2nd to the 20th of June um, for a continuing edu education course and the travel time uh, around there to get back uh, from the States. So if, there, if you have any pastoral um, issues while I'm gone, please do reach out to Allie. Her information is in the bulletin. She will take the first two services, and um, Lutz Ackerman from our church in Augsburg will be here for the third service. So I'll be back after the uh, 20th of June. Um, on Sunday, uh, June 26th, what you'll want to... Um, uh, mark in your calendar is we're going to have a celebration for in honor of Claire's retirement for her and for uh, Reiner. And um, if, if you're, let Joan know, Joan, um, if you can bring something to that, um, that potluck as well. And um, on September 11th of this year, we are going to honor uh, Father Tom Pelleton, who is uh, one of the former rectors of our church, and institute him as the rector emeritus. Um, so that's on September 11th, and just so just wanted to make sure you put that date in your calendar. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death and resurrection and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the banquet of Christ. In his kingdom, there are no outcasts. Wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at God's table. Please pray with me with those who are worshiping online. Lord Jesus, as you promised to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us, be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of eternal life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.